Hey everyone, it's Alex and Gio from Rad Titan. Yo, yo, yo. You over there? Yeah. yeah good. All right. So we're here today and we are looking at the Royal Salinger Thanos. Uh, this piece went up on Sideshow Collectibles not too long ago. And while I was at the Singapore Toy Game Comic Con, I managed to pick up one for Gio there. So he saved himself some shipping and some tax. Winning. But I had to carry around an eight kilo box for the rest of the convention, which was awesome. And so filled, you know you went into XM's little back room and put it in there, you didn't give it a up, second thought. And it filled up my case on the way home. Yeah, I can't complain. All right. Anyway, so what we'll do is uh, we'll do the usual, we'll let you know what we think, measure it, and uh, yeah, give it the breakdown. So keep watching, guys. Yo, 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 welcome back. Like Alex was saying, today we're going to be unboxing this pretty simple, get this out, and uh, we'll have a little run through it. Now, this piece actually, uh, like Alex was saying earlier, is uh, this recently went up on Sideshow. I don't think this comes out until maybe the end of the year or maybe the start of next year. Um, but we've got an early preview, thanks to Alex picking up from the con directly. Um, let's grab it out of the box. So the company itself actually makes a lot of um, like standard pewter sort of Things yeah. like um, well, they make a lot of pewter figurines. They do actually, yeah, but they also a, make like classic yeah. pewter stuff. Is like make, um, give me a chance. What are they called? Well, they make tankards. That's it. Tankards. So they, uh, but they actually they do. They've been around for I think like over 130 years. I think the owner was telling me. And um, it says 1946 on this thing, but that's probably something else. Oh really? <laughs> oh, does it? <laughs> says it on the, oh, yeah, it on the bag. But he said it was fifth generation or so. Third yeah, generation. Well, or... Make, well, hopefully none of them died young because yeah. that's the only way that could be. But, uh, but well, it, it says on the thing um, 1946. But I don't think that's actually the. I think you're right. This I've no, I've heard of this company. You know, I think this is quite an established company making mm. this stuff. So maybe you're right. fifth well, generation you're would. Rambling here, but yeah, yeah that, that's how it goes. No, no. So yeah, the company basically they uh, they do make other pewter things so they make the uh, the sort of standard stuff so the kind of tankards uh, and the figurines but they do also have the dc license yeah. uh, so they've got a lot of batman um a lot of the villains there as well star and they also wars. have the star wars which yeah. they've got quite a lot of pieces of uh and they have the marvel license they have just gone into uh collaboration with xm studios so they do have the iron uh iron man classic yeah. and they also have the batman samurai which they're doing and they're also in talks to extend that line um, along the they're way. They're doing it in 1.6 scale as well, they're which in one six please, scale. please a yeah. lot of people. Yeah. I'm going to dedicate this review to my boy F State. He's a big fan of this mm. sort of stuff. He has a huge collection of pewter things. And also, this is... I found out today, sorry, that the actual um, the office that's based in Kuala Lumpur is one of the top five attractions on um, TripAdvisor. For... Oh, what, like the actual company to go see the company? Yeah, you can actually go to yeah, the yeah, company. Well, yeah. There's a lady on there, uh, Grace... Grace Moments or something like that. I stumbled cool. across it. I watched her video and she went into the actual place and she actually was making like a tankard. They it's amazing. Her. I mean, it's actually, the thing is, what a lot of people may not know about this, the, the, the price point is actually pretty high for the size and the scale that it is. Um, the edition size is only 999 in the world, which is pretty decent. Mm. Um, but there is a lot of breakages, a lot of waste, and also a lot of shrinkage when they make these. So they, they have to, you know, in, in cost, it not costs break, a lot. Not cost, breakages, but No, I didn't say breakages. I said, no, because when things come out and they're shrunk, they have to destroy it. They can't use a lot of it. Yeah. If it comes out and it's shrunk and there's problems with it, it's not easily fixable, is it? Yeah. Well, a lot of it's handmade as well. So, I mean, if they do do the, if there are shrinkages and errors, they do uh, Try have the people on site and manually correct it, yeah. But if not, you're losing up pretty much the whole piece, yeah. right? If it's not salvageable, which is expensive. But let's get out and see what's what. It's, it's heavy, I tell you. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. And little... then also trying to carry it with those string bags, you know. Yeah, poor you. Uh... No, you have to take the sheaf off. Yeah, the sheaf. <laughs> take the sheaf. <laughs> take the knife out of the sheaf. Take the sheaf off there. Okay. Let's have a C. There you go. So you get this... Nice box here. Hmm. Nice, classy sort of box, which actually is, fits the piece perfectly, to be honest. Not it's quite too... similar to the kind of Star Wars boxes. Yeah, you a little bit, yeah, yeah. Maybe that's where they like kind that. of carried on that design from. I just, I think it's quite nice. Let's have a look, see what it looks like inside. Yeah, there comes the weight, the nice parts. Suction. Like your mama. <laughs> <laughs> You know, she doesn't appreciate all this sort of beauty. She doesn't watch our videos. Come on. 
which you better not watch our videos. Cool. So you've got like, um, like a little brochure kind of thing here, which uh, basically just says, uh, uh, home to Captain America, Marvel, home to Captain America, Spider-Man and more, blah, blah, blah. So it's got the, about the branding there. Uh, then you have about the, this is probably what we should have taken out before we were rambling at the beginning. So um, this has actually been around since 1885. Yeah, so maybe it was just the bag was printed in 1946. <laughs> so yeah, the, the bag is quite misleading here. So um, the uh, intrepid young pewter smith named Yong Kun sailed from the southern Chinese port of Shantio uh, to the tin-rich Malay Peninsula to seek his fortune. I'm not going to read the rest. That, actually, was, that, you know, that was actually pretty good. That Today, style. his enterprise is... Royal Selinger, which continues his passion into the... Um, it's nice to know that somebody can actually write like a grown-up as opposed to <laughs> maybe the bounties of Bathos and all that crap oh, was God. written by a five-year-old. <laughs> You're not meant to bitch on it. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Well, the it's good writing. Beauty, it, it beauty. had me interested from the start, which is the start. But there you see like, all the stuff that they make, see? Yeah, like a you got all the, you got the little, you got your little ladles and your teapot and stuff like that. <laughs> it's this cool, man. It's proper cool. I'm really, I'm really excited to see some of this stuff. I mean, I mean, I get pictures from F-State all the time of his collection. It's pretty nice stuff. The Star Wars stuff, Millennium Falcon, all that's amazing. I nice boxing as well, actually. Look, you've got, you got pretty cool um, you got, sorry, the foam, you know, really nice, you know, mm. put together there. So that's cool. Let me just open this up a little bit. And then you've got the uh, Certificate of Authenticity. So this is the uh, Marvel and the Royal Selling. What number do I have? 217? Uh, you have 217. Yeah, well, that's funny because it says it on the box as well there. See that? I've got this nice kind of like... It's got like a stick on the front, have you noticed? <laughs> so looking at this actually reminds me of um, uh, American Psycho with the business cards where he's got like a kind of like... Eggshell. Eggshell. <laughs> <laughs> right, so there's the bottom of it. So that's the base there. And then you basically pull this little bit of you know, bits and pieces out. This whole front comes off. I'll do it this way because it's easy. I'll just get it out of the box. But I'll take it from the top. You just got to be quite, I don't know. Bear off to have a little wiggle. So it comes out and then you're basically left with a whole piece that comes in all one piece like that. It's wrapped up. And we'll get it out of here and see what's what. It's heavy. <laughs> I know. What are you doing? Where are you going? Ooh. There you go. Is there actually a silver version or is it not? Or is it just... I've seen one of the gauntlet where it's not gold, but I don't know. I think that might have just been the constant, like the original. Let's move it to the front. Yeah. Yeah. And here he is in all his glory. And uh, before, I should really show that at the bottom, you do have a nice, it's almost, oh, like, yeah, it's like, almost a like a coin that's yeah. under there. It might actually be part of this. It feels like it's the same sort of stuff, nice cold metal sort of, it might be pure itself actually. Mm. 217 of 999, got the Marvel sort of print there, and then you've got the Royal Selengar, Selengar, um, Selengar, label. Selengar. So then you get into that, okay. So yeah, so the base of these are made of uh, resin, Yeah. and then the actual figure figurines are made of pewter. Um, I have to say straight away, because I did get to see a lot of these at the convention, I did yeah. see, actually I'd lied, I did see this at the convention, but um, a lot of, um, one of the things is a lot of the smaller pieces, the shrinkage is a lot more apparent, and uh, on this Thanos, I, I don't think you can see the, the shrinkage on it anywhere. I mean, his fingers look great, um, you know, all over his body. Um, some of the, I guess with Spider-Man he can be a bit gangly, but some of the Iron Man pieces, I think that they looked a bit, some of the arms and limbs looked a bit too slim on the smaller scale pieces. I don't know, I mean, mate, you, that's, that's yeah. the benefit of being there. Having, this, having seen, this is the first one I've ever seen, I've, I think it's perfect. I mean, the um, start, we'll start at the base and work our way down. It looks like the wreckage of maybe a ship or some kind. There's like mm. skulls all around the base. Yeah, I was gonna say there's like heads. I've there's heads, some. there's skulls all in the sort of, yeah. Bits piece, but there's some sort of mechanical situation going through the center there. There's bits and pieces, uh, pipes and like hatches and things. So it looks like a little like hatch under there. It's, it's, it's almost like a, um, there's a there's a like a mask in that as well. Do you know, it's almost you know what like, that is? Yeah, yeah, but it is almost there's a couple of them actually yeah. around there. That looks like some maybe. Oh, do you know what they are? There is thingies. So you've got hum, you've got like human skulls, and then you've got his sen, you know his centauri. That's what they look like. 
See the front of the masks? Yeah, yeah. They're the Centauri, the, the ones from the movie that he comes in, the first ones in uh, Avengers, the first Avengers. Okay. That's exactly what it looks like. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that's Centauri. <laughs> um, nice. So it's like the battlefield of that, which is great. Mm. Um, I really think that the proportions, getting onto the figure, the proportions are fantastic. Obviously, I've read Thanos since I was a child. And, since uh, I introduced you to Thanos. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I've, uh, you know, I've become sort of a connoisseur, so to speak, in all my years. And I think that they've got the proportions, the thickness of him, just perfect. Um, very, uh, I wouldn't say Bowen-esque, but you know, very comic accurate for sure. Um, this was sculpted by Mafuzo Mokta, who's an absolute legend, yeah. really great guy, and a very talented man. And uh, I think he absolutely nailed this. What I really love about it, getting on to sort of the figure part itself, is the contrast between the sort of the suit, the boots, and then the, the fabric. Well, also then, and the base. Well, no, I, th I think that that says a mood about the piece. You know, I think the black base just makes that figure just jump out and stand out yeah. even more. But I really like the contrast in the sort of smooth metal and then it get into this high textured sort of suit where it's darker. And you've got all that sort of, you can almost feel the fabric on there, you know, really? if it looks like fabric and it's really well done. Really, really nice. I agree with you, the hands and the, the proportions look fantastic. Yeah. Well, as I say, from some of the other pieces I did see, I mean, I got to see pretty much that whole line while I was there and um, I think that the bigger scale stuff I mean the Samurai Batman Samurai and the um, classic. classic Iron Man and this piece I guess, I guess as well it's, it's a bit of a bias this because of the kind of things that we collect yeah. but I just found that those pieces looked the kind of like uh, the, the higher end of the pieces that we yeah, yeah I got you yeah it makes sense it just looked like they delivered better Yeah. Um, I mean on this as well the I'm quite surprised it's all one, it is all one piece. It I mean, is all one piece, yeah. As a statue collector, you kind of expect it to be pegged and you kind of like put it into the base. Yeah. Um, and there wouldn't be anything wrong with that. I yeah, do, especially like maybe the gauntlet, you know, the gold gauntlet. You'd think maybe they'd have that separate and just like clip it on the top, you know, but... I think someone told me, you, that um, there was actually a switch out gauntlet and you took it off and it changed for the uh, silver one and the gold one. That's what Did I'm I tell you that? You told me that one time, yeah, I remember. But as you should I, listen to me, I don't know what the hell's going on. <laughs> but as I say, I mean, you know, looking at the, uh, as George was saying, with the, the contrast of the boots, uh, the, the heavy, heavy texturing of this suit, and then you've got the lining all breaking it up. Um, I think it's done really, really well. Uh, the, the, both, both the gauntlets look great. The gold one um, is more like, um, kind of like a plated... Oh, that's what it is, um, though. It's twenty-four karat plate gold. Yeah, I guess there's some there's some elements around the underside that could be a touch neater, but this is just again clutching at straws and just put, picking things out. Uh, like it's got a funny thing with the gold, though. Like it is. It's not. It's not like. Um, it's like matte. Yes, yeah, matte type of yeah. gold. It's not. Um, I would have expected it to be a bit more of a sort of silky finish, mm. but it's not. Um, which actually, it works. It, it does. It makes it stand out even more well, what because I, I think that the gauntlet being white and the boots being sort of like the silver parts are yeah. very. Strong. What I learned today is actually that the pewter, actually when it's casted, comes out as a kind of yellowy color. Oh really? So I'm quite surprised they didn't just leave it like that for the for the gauntlet, and then actually, well, obviously because this is a premium brand, they went for the gold plating. Yeah, sure. So what actually happens is it comes out with a with a yellow tint, and they yeah. sand it down to get rid of that tint. Oh, nice. Yeah. That's quite interesting. Again, I have to say that... Um, thanks to Grace's moments for that information. <laughs> I, ha I have to say that I think that the proportions of the character are really, really good. Mm. I, I, you know, there, there are a lot of you know, people get it fair. He's quite difficult, really, to get because he's got such sort of alien proportion. Yeah. You know, he's a very thick-set kind of guy, you know, and uh, it, they got that perfect. The sculpting on the shoulders, the back, the triceps, oh, you know, serratus and obliques down the sides there. They all stand out. They're all done really well from... Yeah. Uh, um, you know, Mafuzo did a cracking job. But one of the highlights for me personally is this portrait. Yeah. I think the portrait is one of the best, you know, likenesses for a Thanos piece. And the reason why I say that is because it doesn't have the benefits of the paints and the highlights. It doesn't have any of that. So the portrait has sculpt. to be has, pure sculpt. Pure sculpt. Yeah, it yeah. has to be perfect. Otherwise, because you've got no distinguishing real features yeah, yeah. that jump out at you. And I think that the, you know, the, the way the chin's done, the face, the, the, the way that underneath, you know, because he has quite high cheeks that run down and, yeah. and Mufuzo's managed to, to nail that. 
um, you know, the helmet and everything else. It's, it's just really, Do you really think well the pose, done. though, blocks his face too much? I do a little bit, yeah. I think that, but I think that it's quite an agonising, you know, sort of pose, which yeah. I kind of like. Because the whole thing with Thanos is the, the internal struggles, really, with anything mm. else. And I think, you know, it's, it's, it's always like after trying to please someone comic book-wise. Yeah. And I think that being up like that, I, I think if you pose it the right... It's quite hard, though, because I think... Gonna have to like the way I'm looking at it, well, it's gonna have to be like that. Well, I'm just saying because so you, like you can you either get the face or the gauntlet, you can't have the face and the gauntlet, no, in yeah, the correct in the proper way, not really. There is probably ideal the way I'm looking at it. There, well, uh, you, you can get the gauntlet, or, you can uh, see the gauntlet, but it is definitely you, do, you wouldn't want this low. That's another thing, you don't mm. want this piece low because you don't looking down that gauntlet blocks the face, and there's no way of escaping, yeah, it. yeah. So, you yeah. need it sort of eye level or up high, really. Um, which is, which limits which limits you yeah. a little bit, you know. But most statues and, and figures and things like that are have ideal spaces, you know. Mm. That's how it works. But really impressed with it, man. And I really think, you know, I'm excited to see this company collaborate with some bits and pieces. And, and now they're distributing through Sideshow as well their stuff. So hopefully we'll see some other stuff coming out of there. Well, they are, but I'm not sure they're going to be distributing their um, stuff. No, but it won't, it won't be XM, but there, there's other, know, there's no, other stuff that's coming on. So it doesn't all have to be, you know, there's, they, they do a lot of other stuff. Hopefully their Star Wars stuff as well is really nice. Mm. So, you know, yeah, yeah, see, yeah. you know, when I see these get into collectors. Well, they also have like very, very sort of high end, high price things where they actually have like the, uh, the Iron Man, which is um, huge. life size. Yeah, huge. And one. it's like 27 grand. I'm not surprised though. Um, but they've sold. They sold. They sell them. People buy them. They also have the life-size hand solo in carbonite. I didn't get the price on that one. Uh, they also have. There is a limited edition related with Comic Cave, which is a Captain America, and I think that was an edition size of fifty. The one with shields up near. Yeah. yeah, I think you saw it. I in, seen um, it. Yeah, it's really nice. Uh, Simply Toys. Simply Toys. Yeah, yeah. It's, like, it was a yeah. centerpiece in there. It was very yeah. nice. Yeah, yeah. Very very nice. Indeed. So do you, want to, do you want to measure it? Or? Yeah, yeah, we can measure it. Yeah, yeah. So. Is this one six or is this smaller? Do you think this ain't one six? No, no. This is one eighth. Okay. I believe it's labelled as one eighth anyway. It's not one six. I don't know. So, um, I I believe looking at it, it's probably about ten inches or so. Yeah, you're well wrong. <laughs> it's about eleven and a half inches to the top of the gauntlet, which is about twenty nine centimeters. If yeah. you are going to display it from this point of view, your width is going to be sort of around about 10 inches, 25 centimetres, easy. And then your depth, again, I'll say probably about there, isn't it? So yeah, again, it's around about sort of eight inches, 20 centimetres. So nothing excessive, go on a DTH, yeah. go on any shelf. I mean, for me, I think this is well, a sort of piece that could go onto yeah. a mantelpiece or go onto you know, windowsill, it, 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 it doesn't need... I was going to say, it doesn't need the same kind of care as a statue. I mean, the same kind of considerations. I yeah, mean, you, definitely. You, you wouldn't really need to worry about the, the dust getting on this because you can polish it off. Yeah, exactly. Um, I don't really know about the sun for the base, but because it's black, you should be okay. But the, the sun on the figure won't be an issue. Yeah. I did say to the guy, I can't remember what I said about moving it, and I said, I don't want to drop it. And he goes, oh, you won't break it by dropping it. I'm not worried though. about dropping on my foot. But. Yeah, you worry about your foot. Worry <laughs> about my bones, bitch. Not the. Uh, I yeah. mean, like, listen. I, I think this is, if this is something, if if this is a particular taste that you sort of like, you know, there's something a little bit classy about this piece, which yeah. you know brought me to it. But if this is a sort of look that you're sort of looking at and you like, I don't think you can go wrong. I mean, some of the Star Wars stuff is amazing, and I think this yeah, really translates the, really um, well. I'm your father. Diorama is really nice. Yeah. Actually, if you uh, if you go back on YouTube and. Uh, if you check out, I actually did a booth tour. So if you, you check out all their pieces on there, yeah. I did do the booth tour. Yeah, check them because it's a good, so, it's good yeah, stuff. Definitely look at that. But yeah, thanks for joining us and let us know what you think. Um, is it something that you're after? Have you done that pre-order with Sideshow? Um, I actually spoke to somebody about that and I, you remember we were talking about the the mistake with the edition size. I was going to bring it up actually. So what happened was his Sideshow did actually... I don't know if that's true. No. My mate ordered it. My, the, my mate ordered it day one as soon as it went live and he said it was always that price and that edition size was always 999. Okay. So, oh. I, he, you know, I heard the rumours apparently that they put the 2000 edition size and it yeah. was up at 999. I heard that. But yeah, someone, someone told me that... that but he told Sideshow, me that he bought it as soon as it was live and yeah. he says it, that was the price straight away. Yeah, someone said Sideshow listed it as 999 uh, dollars. Dollars. And then 2000, 2000 edition size. Yes, yeah. And then it's now changed to 700 dollars 
Yeah. And nine 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 edition size. It's a really classy that's piece. Man. Say, it's a really, it's a really classy it's piece. Hearsay. I, would, I would hearsay chat chat. Yeah. It's good stuff, man. So let us know if you like it. Let us know if it's the sort of thing you're after. Um, you know, it, it's a beautiful piece. So anyone that's got this on pre-order, you're going to be very happy with it. I definitely, I mean, it, the scale is a little bit different to what we're used to, but it's definitely something you can fit in around your house. It will look fantastic. Um, so congratulations who's, who's got that on pre-order. Um, and check out also, get on to, if you're, uh, if you're one of our people, you know, you're one of the family, like, comment, subscribe, and share. And if you're liking some of the threads you see us wearing today, jump onto Redbubble and check out Rad Titan merchandise. Ooh, and that helps, shameless it, help, it helps support the channel because uh, we, we get about a few quid per t-shirt and it just goes into better sound, better lights, more stuff like that. So, you know, want to see you all out there. Send pictures. If you do buy any shirts or anything, send pictures to our Facebook page. We want to share them everywhere. So Definitely. mad love. Thanks a lot. Thanks, guys.